the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today the Mass is offered for Mary and Dempsey, and as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, in order to enter into them more worthily, let us first acknowledge our sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest over the great destruction with which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people over her incurable womb. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest were buried in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion, Zion loathsome to you? you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O oh Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not, disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us, and break it not. Among the nation's idols, is there any that gives rain, or can they, the mere heavens send showers. It is not you alone, O Lord. Our God, to whom we look, you alone have done all these things. The word of the Lord. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past, but may your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of your glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Let the prisoners sign and come before you. With your great power, free them from doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In the first reading, I'd like to ask a question. So is it the Lord that has left the land barren? Uh, there is Jeremiah is talking to the people of Judah. The, the description that we have in the first reading is of a really barren land. Um, they talk about the prophet and the priest foraging, searching out for some kind of food. This used to be the land flowing with milk and honey. Remember the promised land uh, that was uh, bountiful indeed when Moses and when Joshua brought the people uh, into this promised land. Um, and yet now it seems to be um, completely without fruit. It seems to be something almost unrecognizable, this sense of destruction that's come over the land. So I ask this question then, is it the Lord that has caused this to happen? Well, before I answer that question, let me turn to the gospel and just use the imagery that we have in this parable that Jesus interprets today of the weeds and the wheat. Um, and just think about that imagery for just a moment. Um, when you think about the weeds and the wheat, at the end of the, the harvest, then the parable says that the weeds will be bundled up and then they will be burned up in fire. And then the wheat is gathered into the barn. And if this is something that you've ever done, uh, this, if you've had any experience with this, the weeds themselves, there's not a lot of substance to the weeds. They tend to be without any nourishment. There's no nourishment you're going to get from the weeds. Uh, they tend to not have much to them, but they grow really fast, don't they? They tend to overtake other things in the garden. The wheat is the nourishing substance, and it takes longer to grow. The weeds grow faster and really lack all nourishment whatsoever. What happens when you throw the, the empty weeds or dry grass or anything like that that doesn't have much substance to it, when you throw it in the fire, it burns up very quickly, which is really proof of just how little of substance there is actually present. It burns up just so quickly and then there it is gone. But it's really that valuable wheat that is in fact worth holding on to. There is life and nourishment and sustenance. Well, the interpretation to that parable that we have today um, speaks of the, of the weeds as people, as the children of the evil one. And the wheat also as people, as the children of the kingdom. And here we have this contrast between the two. Those who belong to the kingdom, who are like the good, and virtuous, and substantive wheat that grows, uh, that takes time to grow. But whereas those that do evil and those who lead others into sin are like the weeds. Uh, those that oftentimes, is the, and this is something the Psalms often kind of meditate on, why is it that they seem to prosper so quickly? Well, they tend to grow faster, but there's not the substance that is there behind them. Um, there isn't much to the weeds that are there, even if they seem to prosper. It seems as though you can't get rid of the weeds at times. But nonetheless, it's, uh, but that is, is not where life and sustenance is found. So I come back then to this first reading, and I ask then, is it the Lord that has caused the land to be barren? Or maybe another way to think about this, uh, this passage that we heard from Jeremiah is that if the people themselves have turned away from the Lord, they cease to put in the effort, that slow and continuous effort of building up a life of, of, of virtue in the Lord so as to become that good and substantive wheat that yields a good harvest. If instead they are only concerned about their own pursuits, if they're only um, focused on the sins they commit or even leading others into sin, well then they really are those, those weeds that are present. 
weeds that don't provide any nourishment, they grow up quickly, they choke off the yield of that which otherwise might in fact provide nourishment, um, and the weeds are truly good for nothing. And so here, the people of Judah, having turned away from the Lord, are really like a garden filled with weeds. So there they go out foraging in the land, looking for something to consume, looking for something to sustain them. But there isn't anything, because they haven't put in that hard work that a farmer oftentimes understands all too well to yield that harvest. Since they haven't paid the price, they are re reaping truly what they have sown. So perhaps, to some extent, the fact that they are um, in a wasteland area is as much their fault as it is a punishment given by the Lord. Is it the Lord that inflicted it on them, or in some ways do they inflict it on themselves? One of the things that I think it's always good for us to remind, to be reminded of, is that we oftentimes carry within ourselves the consequences of our own actions and choices. Um, we can make bad choices and oftentimes have to pay the price for them. Um, so let that be an encouragement to be even that much more devoted and dedicated to being the good uh, wheat that we are called to be, um, to that slow and steady growth, to, to growing in integrity and in virtue, so as to become not only a source of nourishment, encouragement, and in fact even a source of life, uh, but to be a good example to others, that we might be what the Lord wants us to be, and that we, we might be a good witness also to others around us. stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, and for the continued call to put into practice the gospel and to grow in virtue. We pray to the Lord. We pray for farmers and for those who provide for our produce to, to sustain us, for blessings on their efforts. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace and tranquility through, throughout our uh, community and throughout our country for an end to hostilities. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those affected uh, by difficult economic circumstances, for those who struggle to care for themselves and their families, uh, for blessings upon them in finding prosperous work. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our seminarians on retreat and for blessings during this time of spiritual renewal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for the recovery of all those who are sick, who are infected, for blessings on those who care for the sick, and for the end of the spread of disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us remember all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Dempsey family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for the purification of the Church and the protection of our religious liberties. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the grace and glory of the Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. In his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, there and I forgot again, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis's Assistant Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.